Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. I've been vegan for almost 11 years now. Can you believe it? Such a long time. I was in high school when I started being vegan and now I'm almost done with my PhD. So I thought it would be maybe a good time to just talk about uh, supplements and supplements that you should take on a vegan diet to ensure that you, you're healthy and you will stay healthy. And also just explain a bit how my supplementation routine has kind of changed throughout the years. Um, yeah, those kinds of things. So right off the bat, I will say that I think most supplements are a scam. I think they're a scam. I think they just, uh, those companies just want your money and you actually don't need very many supplements to be healthy on a vegan diet. The most crucial supplement that you absolutely need to take is a vitamin B12 supplement. Uh, B12 is the only nutrient that you by definition will not get on a vegan diet. I know that a lot of products are fortified with B12 these days, like soy milk, certain vegan fake meats, etc. But I don't, I personally don't rely on that all too much. I see that as an added bonus, you know, because I don't want to have to worry about having to drink so and so much soy milk every day or make sure I eat like at least three vegan burgers uh, every day. Um, so that's why I just supplement with a pill. Now, just to reiterate, I don't know if this is still a thing, but like when I started my vegan journey in like 2012, uh, especially among raw foodists, there was still very much this belief that you could get B12 the natural way by eating fermented foods like sauerkraut or spirulina or whatever. Like, don't listen to those people. They don't know what they're talking about. All of that is just nonsense. It's not true. And if you do not supplement B12 on a vegan diet, then you will eventually um, develop a deficiency. At least it's very, very likely that you will develop a deficiency with possibly irreversible neurological problems as a consequence. And we don't want that. Like, I don't want to, you know, deprive my body of a crucial nutrient that I know I'm not getting um, only to then maybe end up as the next ex-vegan who needs uh, be, like beef liver to feel their cells quiver or whatever Lear Keith used to say. So there's various different ways of getting vitamin B12. Uh, I have been taking just pills uh, for the past 11 years. I started with the VEG1 uh, supplement released by the Vegan Society in the UK. And then eventually I moved to using methylcobalamin instead of cyanocobalamin, which is the B12 form in the VEG1 supplement simply because I kind of fell for the marketing that methylcobalamin was like the bioactive form of vitamin B12 and that it would therefore be somehow superior. That's not the case. You can just use cyanocobalamin. It's cheaper. Um, we know that it works uh, from a lot of uh, peer-reviewed scientific studies. You don't need to take as much. So the pills also tend to be somewhat uh, smaller, which is really nice for somebody like me who has immense problem swallowing pills it's a lot better now but like years ago i just um i just could barely swallow any pills it's just i just couldn't force it down my throat for a while i also used the b12 toothpaste um that you can buy in germany it's it's okay i just feel like it's kind of the most expensive way of getting b12 and like one of the more expensive toothpastes on the market so I like bought it once just to um, just to try it out. But but I feel like an actual supplement like a pill is just a lot more convenient because I know the exact amount I'm getting every day. Um, it's cheaper and also my teeth are just very weird. So I need special toothpaste. So, you know, that was just doomed to fail anyways. Um, so nowadays I just use a B12 supplement. Usually I just use what it, whichever one is cheapest on Amazon. Um, so I've just gone through various different brands. Um, the second nutrient I'm supplementing is vitamin D and that's pretty much just because I live in the Netherlands where the sky is gray like most of the time and I feel better when I take vitamin D in winter especially. I don't know if this is the placebo effect at work or whether this actually, you know, actually props up my <laughs> vitamin D levels in my blood to such an extent that I do feel a difference in my mood. But um, yeah, but yeah, I pretty much just take it um, year round, it, like 1000 international units a day. It's just become sort of a habit of mine. Um, and I haven't noticed any like negative effects of it, but I've also never gotten my blood work done, honestly, because I feel like as long as there's, as long as I don't have any symptoms of any deficiency or like, I don't know, excess something. I don't feel like I should 
I need to get my blood work done, I think it's pointless and a waste of money and uses up unnecessary resources in the healthcare system. Now, specifically if you leave Specifically, if you live in Europe, I think you should also pay attention to your iodine and selenium intake. Soils in Europe, especially in Germany and in the Netherlands, tend to be pretty poor um, in terms of iodine and selenium. So iodine is, of course, pretty easy to supplement, right? It's just added to our salt, except for like sea salt, which I also feel like is a scam. I don't know. I don't taste the difference. It's just it's just expensive, um, but maybe my palate is also just not that refined. Um, so, when I'm, so when I'm in Europe, I usually just use iodized salt. Um, selenium is another potential issue in Europe, not so much in the US. Um, so, so back when I was still taking the VEG1 supplement, that was also just in there. So no issue with selenium. But when I eventually stopped that multivitamin, I just uh, kind of took uh, B12 and a D supplement like separately. I just made sure to eat Brazil nuts every once in a while, but that's also kind of difficult. I don't know. I don't feel like eating Brazil nuts every day. So I've also been thinking of just uh, switching back to a supplement that actually has selenium just so that I know that I'm covered when it comes to that. So the multivitamin that I use right now is the Diva Vegan Multivitamin. I've been wanting to try this out for quite a while actually. Um, it's just pretty expensive in Europe um, but right now I'm in California so it was this was just like 20 bucks on Amazon for two uh, which I think is an okay deal. Um, the only gripe that I have with this one is that they add like a lot of stuff that I think is not necessary, like vitamin C, like I'm like really vitamin C. Also the magnesium that is added, uh, it's magnesium oxide, which has pretty poor bioavailability. It also only covers 10% of your uh, daily needs. So I'm like, yeah, they just added it uh, so that they could claim this is more of a complete supplement, right? Um, but I mean, I think in other terms, it's fair. It has a really high amount of vitamin B12, which is what I'm looking for. Vitamin D, selenium, iodine. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna switch back to the VEG1 supplement when I'm in Europe. Um, because this is just, uh, yeah, I think it has too much. And this also just leads to the tablets being like really, really big. I mean, I was just telling you guys that I have problems um, swallowing stuff. And this is huge. I've, this is really big. It's so difficult for me to swallow this. And my husband just smelled this the other day and he said like, oh yeah, this smells really a lot like kelp, um, which I don't like, I hate seaweed. Um, so he was like, oh my God, how can you, how on, how on earth can you swallow this? And uh, yeah, not like sushi. I think this one is, it's okay, but I'm probably gonna go back to using the veg one supplement, which has, Somewhat fewer nutrients, but then again, I don't think most of these are just completely unnecessary um, or just added there for marketing purposes. But overall, it's not bad. So something that I also briefly want to touch on is uh, my fitness supplements. I'm really physically active. Um, back in the Netherlands, I went to the gym six times a week. Uh, right now, I go to a park here or at the corner and do calisthenics five times a week. So I'm very, very active and I use a protein supplement, protein powder, as well as creatine. So I know it's not like you actually become protein deficient on a vegan diet, like that's just a myth. You will get enough protein to survive, but uh, especially if you're physically active, um, I can't eat enough tofu to make sure that I get um, the amount of protein that I need for optimal muscle growth and honestly to just not feel like shit. <laughs> the day after I worked out. Like this has made a huge difference. I at the moment strive for around 140 grams of protein every day, um, which is just a bit shy of uh, two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And there's just no way I can eat this, uh, just, you know, in terms of whole foods, like in terms of tofu or whatever. So I use uh, protein powders, which are shockingly expensive in the US. Like, holy shit, like what is going on here? It's at least twice as expensive as what I would pay in uh, Germany or in the Netherlands, which I already think is a lot. I use the Orgain uh, protein powder at the moment simply because it was the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon. That wasn't just like pure pea protein, which I think just tastes absolutely horrible. This one is okay. Um, but I'm so looking forward to having my soy rice protein mix from DM. 
back at my disposal because that one is just so nice it's way cheaper and it's really easy to get a decent amount of protein if you just make one of those protein shakes uh, with soy milk that's personally really important to me just getting enough uh, protein by using protein shakes and also in the fitness industry there's so many supplements that are being pushed on you like hmb and bcaas and whatever I feel like most of them are also just a scam and don't actually have a lot of scientific evidence or they are actually just unnecessary because you can get these um, nutrients like way cheaper just by eating stuff. But the one supplement that actually does have a lot of evidence to it, that's creatine. It actually does um, boost your performance. It's quite safe, uh, also safe to take long term. And I've been taking this for quite a while now. I usually just take like two grams per day. The only thing about creatine is that if you've ever used it, you know that the consistency is awful. It doesn't actually dissolve in water. It's just kind of, it just floats around in your cup um, and then you just have to drink it as quickly as possible so that uh, it's not super disgusting. At least that's the experience I've made with every single creatine powder that I've consumed in the past like three years or so it's just they're just bad but um yeah this is just like a 20 second thing every day to just add two grams uh, so like one small scoop to a cup of water and just drink it i don't think that most other fitness supplements or vegan supplements in general have that much evidence to them that i would like recommend to take them or that i ever bothered with them maybe dha but honestly with that i'm also just a bit skeptical um, if you actually do eat uh, flax seeds or oils i think you should be fine um but i mean ultimately it's uh it's up to you however you want to spend your money i just uh don't like wasting money on unnecessary supplements so these are all the supplements that i take on a vegan diet I hope this video was informative and let me know in the comments down below if you use any other kind of supplement that you think has enough scientific evidence to it um, to actually bother with it and to spend uh, money on it. Um, I'm curious because I don't, I honestly don't think that's the case. Don't forget to give this video a like to please the algorithm overlords and subscribe to this channel and then we'll see each other in a new video very soon.